Revon Systems seamlessly blends technology innovations with real-world applications. For Tech Republic and ZDNet in New York, I'm Dan Patterson, and it's a pleasure today to speak with Ted Smith. He is the CEO of Revon Systems in Louisville, Kentucky. Ted also used to run uh, Tech Republic. Ted, it's a pleasure to speak with you today. Uh, let's talk first a little bit about how Revon blends technology with healthcare systems to kind of overcome many of the challenges that have foiled analog systems. Yeah, sure, and thank you so much for uh, having me. So uh, Revon is uh, a long uh, list of companies that's very much focused on making the most of the technology you now have in your home or in your hand. And so uh, there are now, as you probably know, hundreds of thousands of medically oriented mobile phone apps. Now there are hundreds of Alexa skills. So Revon uh, has essentially captured the power of what machine learning and artificial intelligence brings um, about medical decision making and puts it in your hand so that you at home, not at the doctor, not in the hospital, has access to very high quality medical decision making and assessments. And so we make applications that help people with asthma and COPD and in the future congestive heart failure and other conditions where people are uncertain at home and would love to have uh, highly accessible, very affordable, expert medical help when they're confused about how well they are. The healthcare system itself is incredibly complex and it's difficult to say the healthcare system. Uh, there are so many different COGs. I wonder if you could help us understand the digital transformation of each COG and the journey your industry has been on leading up till today. Sure. Um, the, the short version of the history of time uh, on this one is you have things that happen in the, the, the healthcare provider system, right? So those are where clinicians uh, operate. You have um, innovations and transformations that occur in the home and you have transformations that occur in payment and you know, the people who ultimately reimburse the people that provide services. And in those broadly, in those three areas, there's always an interaction with government as government is also um, a payer and also a standards setter. And so in the healthcare system, when we talk about the providers, the people that provide care, a lot of their uh, innovations and transformations are focused on um, getting a better handle on an individual's future health status uh, and on a population's health that they may manage, people that have been to that hospital, people that, that go to this practice all the time. And so, you know, this is where having a historical data on patients is, is critically important. We're having tools that can uh, run the analytics to help decide what interventions may be most effective for which patients. Is a, is, a, is a really promising high growth area. A lot of work in remote patient monitoring and, and uh, fields like that, very much focused on uh, better understanding individual risks for future health outcomes. As you move over into the home, you have all sorts of interesting companies. We all know them well. Tech Republic talks about them all, all the time. Uh, these are the big technology companies who are increasingly making your home smarter, um, are helping you with your own sort of personal productivity. And you know, those companies are uh, really helping remind you of, of your circumstances, of things that you might do differently, uh, trying to help keep you well, okay, which is different than removing disease. And then on the, on the payer side, you know, there's all sorts of interest in uh, adopting digital technologies because they're so much more cost effective in theory than drugs, than medical devices, than getting procedures done. And so we're looking for this uh, sort of new category, which isn't covered by most payers today, most insurance companies. Um, but we all recognize in the future, your doctor certainly will prescribe a software application, for sure. It just doesn't happen that often today. And so we're seeing each of these three areas of the healthcare system uh, embrace technology and digital transformation differently for different objectives. You mentioned a moment ago the impact of artificial intelligence and automation. What are some of the other technologies that are powering the digital transformation of healthcare? Yes, yeah, so the, I mean, the Internet of Things that we all know and like to talk a lot about, um, you know, is truly revolutionary for healthcare because um, so much of healthcare historically has been uh, very expensive equipment in clinical settings 
or um, you know, very subjective uh, you know, kind of uh, analysis of a person's situation, right? So if you call a nurse line, you know, there's just not much information available about your situation other than what you can describe uh, to that person on the other end of the phone. We, with, uh, with sensors in the home, with wearables, uh, you know, we now can know a lot more about your specific situation so that it's not incumbent upon you to try to figure out how well you are. It actually can be much more knowable to them. So, you know, we see sensors uh, in the home on the person as a, a tremendous uh, inflection point for the industry. You mentioned the benefits to consumers and the benefits of knowing and being able to forecast uh, future health challenges. What are some of the benefits to business, healthcare providers, and other agents within the healthcare system that digital transformation could assist with? Yeah, so, you know, at the end of the day, I think, you know, maybe for the first time in a long time, everybody in the conversation, I believe, now shares the same goal, which is how to keep you as well as possible uh, for as long as possible. And so, you know, everybody from your employer to your family to your insurance company to your doctor uh, increasingly now is interested in anticipating things that could go wrong or um, getting ahead of situations that may be trending in an in a awkward direction. And so this is, uh, this is a whole new frontier. You know, we, we have spent a lot of time essentially remediating disease, treating disease, trying to remove disease, reacting to disease. And, and this future chapter of healthcare is very much focused on uh, not having that disease occur or uh, lessening the extent of some kind of an attack that you may be scheduled to have in the future. And this is a, just a, a great time to be alive because we all w want to work in a system that's trying to keep us well. Uh, well, this is healthcare, and there are things that can go wrong. What are some of the potential challenges of digital transformation for the industry? So uh, many years ago, I worked at the Department of Health and Human Services in the Office of the National Coordinator. These were the health records people. Um, it was a great experience uh, because it was a great opportunity to learn where a lot of the friction is in healthcare, and it's, it really has been on data exchange. And so, you know, we, we'd like to believe that if we were traveling, you know, let's say across the country, that we, if we were in an accident, that we'd be able to be in the hospital and they would know my um, health history based on my home health system. And, you know, that's just not a reality today because of the various parties and their vested interests in holding data and not sharing it. And so in this case, it always gets in the way of people getting better care because what we really need is the data flowing more like water. And um, you, know, you get the privacy folks who say, well, you know, it's too much risk in sharing data. You get the vendors who say, you know, it's uh, not my best interest to share data because you know, it commoditizes what I do. So, so you have data exchange, number one problem we have to tackle right now. Uh, it's impossible to discuss healthcare without also talking about the government. Uh, what are the best ways that public-private partnerships can exist within uh, healthcare systems and use technology to create efficiencies that uh, deliver healthy solutions, uh, pun intended, to consumers? So there's been a great shift in uh, the way that Medicare is uh, willing to reimburse for uh, health services. And that, um, that comes loosely under the, the idea of shared value or accountable uh, care systems, where uh, it, it's not about paying for individual procedures, it's about paying for outcomes. And so the good news is with the, with the federal government shift in Medicare and Medicaid, towards paying for outcomes rather than paying for procedures, it's encouraged the private marketplace. Think about the Medicare Advantage companies. Think about the managed Medicaid companies. It has encouraged them to uh, take more risks and adopt technologies that may uh, be truly beneficial to reducing uh, the overall you know, kind of medical intensity that, that many uh, individuals have. And so that is a great uh, example of the, the kinds of shifts that we need more of. You know, having the private sector be able to, to make those investments, to take those risks, knowing that they'll get the upside if, they pay, if it works out, right? And so that kind of shared value work is tremendously important. 
Ted Smith, CEO of Revon Systems. Can you forecast the future for us? Uh, uh, leave us with some advice and, and some insight on what technologies are likely to be most disruptive and what technologies are likely to be most helpful in, say, the next 18 to 36 months. Well, I'm going to leave you with something controversial that I'm sure will be memorable, but um, my money is on the toilet, just to be clear. Um, you know, what we, what we have seen with biometrics, with uh, all that can be done by sampling what's going on with a person, you know, believe it or not, we can learn a lot about your health with a smart toilet. And so, again, kind of a gross thought, but I promise you it's something we all use multiple times a day. And uh, it, it probably will be the gateway to knowing about your health all the time.